Hey everyone, my name is Alex, and this sleeping pad might be more comfortable than my old bed. In fact, Nemo calls this a luxury sleeping pad, which I can agree with. This is the Nemo Roamer Double Sleeping Pad. So I've been using this sleeping pad for probably over a year now. I've taken it on everything from weekend camping trips to road trips across the country, and it's been a great sleeping pad. So first things first, this is the Roamer in the bag, and it's pretty compacted. Most of the air is out of it, but you could probably get more. If you really, really take your time and push a lot of air out of this, you can probably get it smaller, but this is a pretty realistic look on what it would look like if you're just rolling it up when you get done camping. It's pretty big as you can see in the bag right now. It's about 28 inches by 12.5 inches. The Nemo website says 26 inches by 11 inches, which is probably possible. You just, it's never easy getting these in the bag the same way. As for what's included, you get the sleeping pad, a duffel bag, a stuff sack, and a pump sack to help inflate it. All right, let's get this thing out of the bag and see what it looks like. This is a self-inflating pad and it can be kind of confusing to inflate at first. There are these three different valves. The ones on the left and the right are for inflating and deflating. The middle one is only used for deflating the pad. The left has this tuner valve which is used to release small amounts of air for more fine-tuned adjustments. To inflate the pad, you completely open the left and right valves and just let it sit for a little while. All right, once those are open, you can just let it sit for a few minutes but it's not going to get fully inflated but it's making some good progress already. Okay, so it's made some good progress. Like there's a lot more in the front here, a lot more full along the sides too. It's looking pretty good and it's more flat on the top, but it's definitely, it's not perfect yet. All right, so once it's inflated for a while, you're gonna close up the right valve all the way there. And then on the left side, close up the one-way inflation valve. There's two parts on the left side. Plug up the first part. You're going to need to use the included pump sack to fill it all the rest of the way with air. Or I like to use this mini electric pump. That looks pretty nice. All right, just like that, it's fully inflated. It only takes maybe a few minutes. If you wanna make some minor fine tune adjustments, you can use the tuner valve by pushing this right here. And then just make sure all the valves are fully closed. Bam. Okay, so as for all the specs on the sleeping pad, it weighs eight pounds, four ounces. It is 78 inches long by 52 inches wide. So 6.5 feet by about 4.3 feet. It is four inches thick with an R value of six, which is very, very warm. The outside fabric is made from 100% PCRPU polyester with the top being made from 50D polyester and the bottom is made from a bit more durable 75D polyester. The inside material is open cell foam and it only comes in one color which is called Lagoon. So as for my own personal experience, I only ever use this sleeping pad on nice flat ground. There was nothing with like larger rocks that you wouldn't typically put a tent on top of anyway. And it felt great. There were never any lumps or anything from the ground below me. I also never sunk into any areas, which you, you can kind of get with regular blow up air mattresses. You can kind of sink into some areas. That never happened to me. It was smooth all the way across. Every time I was using this, I was sleeping next to my girlfriend and we both had plenty of room on the sleeping pad. We both were very comfortable we weren't bumping into each other or anything while we were sleeping. Unless you're a very, very tall person, I think this is a great size for two people. So the top of the pad is already very soft. It has an almost kind of silky feel to it while still being durable. Obviously, it's very thick and there's some good padding or foam cushioning to it. It isn't just air in there like you would get from a regular air mattress. There's some foam to help cushion it that feels very nice to sleep on. The bottom of the pad is definitely a bit harder and more durable, so it's gonna hold up against the ground below it. I have yet to have any issues with losing air or any leaks. Of the two or three dozen times I've used this, I've never had to add air after a night of sleeping on it. So it's great at keeping the air inside of it and hopefully it continues that way for a while. Okay, as for deflation. First thing is to open all three of the valves. 
a lot of air is gonna come out rushing right away and it's gonna just start deflating by itself. Next thing is to fold it in half and then just start rolling, trying to push out as much air as you can. It's gonna take a little bit of time to roll it all out. Okay, once it is fully rolled up, you're gonna to wanna to close the left and the right valves and leave the middle one open. First one, this one, so the middle valve is still open. That's because this one only is used for deflation. It only lets air go out, no air goes in. Step two now is to fully unroll the pad again and re-roll it back up, pushing all of the rest of the air out. It's already significantly smaller than before. Oh, there. All right, once all the air is out, just close up that middle valve. There. Just like that, it's fully deflated and rolled up. So again, just with, just like inflating, it's gonna take a little bit of time and patience. It's not too long, but it's not as fast as a backpack and sleeping pad, which I wouldn't expect, but it really doesn't take too long. Maybe, maybe two minutes to deflate. All right, now that we've gone over everything on the tent, the specs, how to set it up, how to take it down, my experience, I wanna talk about some of the drawbacks on the tent. And unfortunately, the first thing is the price of the sleeping pad. The Roamer double sleeping pad is going to run you $400, which is the same exact price as this Nemo Aurora high-rise tent. <laughs> $400 is a lot of money for a sleeping pad, but if you get the smaller Romer XL wide, which is the one-person sleeping pad, that's still going to cost you $250. So it's a lot of money for a camping sleeping pad. Number two is the size of it, and I'm talking about when it's rolled up. It does take up a decent amount of room in the back of your car. It doesn't really self-inflate or self-deflate too much by itself, so it can be kind of a hassle to pack back up, as you just saw. No matter what you do, it's still going to take up a lot of space in the back of your car, where my backpacking sleeping pad is the size of a water bottle. Aside from that, there really aren't any drawbacks to the sleeping pad. Aside from it being a lot of money, it's very, very comfortable, it's durable, and I have yet to have any issues with it. So in conclusion, I really enjoy using this sleeping pad for just my regular camping trips. Obviously, you're not going to use it for backpacking, but this sleeping pad honestly is really the best sleeping pad that I have used for car camping. The price is definitely a bit steep, but you do get what you pay for, and this is definitely a luxury and quality sleeping pad. If you are interested in picking up one for yourself, there is a link in the description that will take you straight to it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. That will help get this video out to even more people and will help me out a bit as well. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Oh,